It has given us all the things that pertains to life and godliness, to live a godly life, to live a righteous life. It is through what? Knowledge of him. So what is one of the things? Knowledge. The more we acquire knowledge of him who is Jesus Christ, the more we understand him, the more we we, 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 we do, we, we sacrifice in wanting to know him and, 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 and understand his nature and who he is, that could take us on to living a godly life and to godliness of life. We've all come, we all are on, we're all on different levels, you may say, in our spiritual growth. You know, some have been in the faith longer, some are new, you know, some are new. And so it's through gaining knowledge of him that we begin to grow we begin to understand and 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 you know expand in our faith and then he goes on he goes on who called us by glory and virtue by which have given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so through the knowledge that of him we have been called to glory and virtue meaning glory and moral high standards we've been called to a moral high standard which by us operating in this because why because we receive by hearing we've received the faith of jesus christ and now as we've gained knowledge of him we've grown we're growing and 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 and, and we're walking in this thing called godliness that leads us to pertain the precious promise the precious promise of salvation eternal life right that we will be partake and um, partakers of the divine nature of god then it goes on to say, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith. So whose responsibility is it to add to your faith? Yourself. It is your own responsibility to add to your faith. It, it doesn't say something like, you know, um, given the circumstance, rely on your pastor to, to be able to add to your faith. Rely on your mother to be able to add to your faith. No, it says, do add to your faith. So you have the faith of, of, of God, faith of Jesus Christ. You believe in him. You're saying you're, 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 you're trusting in him. So it says, add to your faith virtue. So to the faith that I have in Jesus Christ, I'm going to add virtue. Meaning that I'm going to take responsibility to operate in the high moral standards. I will not subject myself. I will not allow myself to participate in debauchery. To participate in something that is ungodly. To, to something that I, be de I, I deem it to be of a, a low standard of morality. I will take that responsibility and not do those things because those things are not godly. And then it says, to virtue, knowledge. Yeah. Right? So here we go again. We hear the word knowledge again. So knowledge is also important. That's something that you have to take responsibility in. You cannot rely on Sunday service only to grow in the knowledge of God. You cannot rely on Sunday service. Because Sunday service here, we're gathering, we're here to, to edify one another and to give glory to God. So we cannot just come here on Sundays and rely on and trust in that, yes, I will gain all my knowledge that I need from here. Otherwise, it will be very slow. Your growth will be very, very slow. So it's not, and, and the funny thing is, even in this church, you know, we meet on uh, on Sunday, we have Bible studies on Wednesdays, we, we, we meet up on Thursdays, we meet up on Saturdays for um, salvation. But yeah, imagine you only come on just on the Sunday. And then even at home, 
You're not even your due, you're not even doing your due diligence in reading what you've learned or even even what was said in the church. Doing your due, uh, due diligence in meditating on his word. And to grow in his knowledge, to grow in understanding and, and, and figuring out, you know, where God what God wants for me. How does God want me to move? How does God want me to um, to serve him? We're not praying. We're not doing that. We're not adding to it. We're not taking responsibility. Then how do we expect to grow? How do we expect to grow if we're not doing these things? And then it goes on to say, to knowledge, self-control. This You have to take that step. You Because understand, if before you came to Christ, you struggled in self-control. You struggled in self-control. You always... You always wallowed in your pride. Now that you've said, listen, I've, I've, I've taken Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I'm willing to sacrifice everything else for him, then it's your responsibility to be able to add on to yourself self-control if you want to be able to abide in what he has said. If you want to abide in this thing called love that he has placed upon us, then self-control is necessary. It's necessary. And, you know, and as we, you know, from verse 3, when it talks about divine power has been given to us. It, by the name of Jesus Christ, we have the power to be able to subdue the flesh. Amen. We have the power. He has given it to us. But it takes faith to be able to believe that. It takes faith. Because I literally, I know some Christians that have said, oh, you know what? Um, I get drunk. You know, I'm, I'm just being honest. I get drunk. I believe in Jesus Christ, but I get drunk. You know, and th it is what it is. That's, where, that's how I am. My question is, are you, do you truly have faith in Jesus Christ? That, that's what I, I, I would say. Do you truly, do you actually, have you actually made that decision to actually wanting to follow Jesus Christ? Amen. Have you, did you count the cost? Because if you're not willing to, to let go of your drunkenness, then can you really call yourself a follower of Christ? I would say no. no. I would say no. Because sometimes, I guess, we are just expecting God to just show up and just, yeah, just, you know, do it for us. But then what's, what would be the point? Then we might as well become robots. We might as well become robots. We might as well not have a will of our own. And just allow God to just... Uh, mm, yes. You know. <laughs> we become robots. Right? So, even for that, you know, when I heard that, you know, it was... You see, that there's a difference in, yes, this is what I'm struggling with, but I'm trusting in God. I'm having faith in Jesus Christ. But by his power, I will overcome it in Jesus' name. Amen. That is the responsibility that you have to take for yourself. That is the, is, 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 is the, I don't have the word for it. But that's something that you have to grasp and hold. And say, yes, I'm going to overcome this. Right now, I'm struggling with this. But I will overcome it in Jesus' name. And I'm telling you, God will not let you down. If that's truly what you want to let, if you truly want to let go of it, you may be a slave to it now. But the more you grow in his knowledge, the more you grow in his understanding, the more you continue to impose on yourself the, the, the high moral standards to operate in those things. Self-control. If you begin to add these things to yourself by the power and by his divine power through faith, you overcome it in Jesus' name. And that is the responsibility. That's the power of taking responsibility for yourselves rather than relying on someone else. Rather than relying on the pastor. Rather than relying on our fathers. Rather than relying on our mothers. It's when you take that responsibility for yourself. That's when you see the growth of the Lord working in you. You see the spirit of the Lord working in you, transforming you. Your mind begins to like, wow, last year I used to think like this, but now look at me now. My mind is, is so different now. Wow, I can't even recognize myself. Who was that person? 
But sometimes when you are in the midst of it, it just seems like far away. It just seems like how? 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 I'm encouraging you, take that responsibility, man. Don't take God's liberty, liberties, if that makes sense. Don't take the liberties of God's liberty. The liberty that Christ has given us, don't take liberties of it and mock God with it. And say that, well, I've been saved by grace. I've been saved by Jesus Christ dying on the cross. So if I'm, you know, I'm doing this thing, surely God will forgive me and it's fine. No. no. Don't take liberties. And I'm going, and, and in Galatians, um, Paul addresses this to the Galatians, to the Galatia church. He, he addresses it. So as we, as we kind of says to, to, um, add, um, to, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to, um, to perseverance, godliness, to, glo um, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 amen, amen. All of these things, you have to take that responsibility to add it to yourself. The, 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 you know, we, we don't want to pay lip service. That's what the Israelites were doing. They were just giving lip service. But their heart wasn't circumcised for God. They haven't circumcised their heart for God. They haven't, you know, <laughs> we don't want to be hypocrites. We don't want to be hypocrites. That's one of the things that I fear the most. I fear of being a hypocrite. I'm fear that I'm saying, I, I, oh, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm, 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 yes, yes, Christ, yes, yes, yes. But yet in my everyday life, how I act towards my friends, how I act towards my family, how I act towards my wife, how I act, it's so unchrist like. No. We have to take responsibility, man. We have to look to ourselves. I'm having, I'm having, oh, uh, you know, spiritual attacks, for instance. We have spiritual attacks. We are always bamboozled by the enemy and we allow the enemy to have his way in our lives. Bringing confusion, bringing doubt, bringing all of these things. Whose responsibility is it? Whose responsibility is it to be able to stand against these um, spiritual attacks. You. You have the responsibility by being able to 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 um 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 and being disciplined in praying, being disciplined in seeking the Lord, being disciplined in going before the Lord and fellowshipping in His presence, meditating on His Word, and being what persevering because that's what it says here. To self-control, perseverance. Add perseverance. Because from the top, as it says, you know, add to your faith. And then it's listing the things that you have to add to your faith. And one of them is perseverance. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to persevere. Because if you don't persevere, Satan will have his way with you. He will deal with you. Just like he dealt with Judas. It says that the, and then Satan entered his heart. And then after he, Satan has used him to do the deed, afterwards he was like, ah, what have I done? What have I done? Then off he went to commit suicide. You see, Satan was laughing. He was like, yes. I know Christians. I know, I've seen so-called Christians who were in the faith, who were so zealous for the Lord. Like, you couldn't even see it. Like, they were so zealous. Like, they were out there preaching. Yeah. Out there doing their work. Yes, Lord. Lord. <laughs> now, where are they? Some of them have abandoned the faith. They have abandoned the faith. Some are still, like, they, they, they've, they've gone so backwards now. Like, they just, they don't know whether they're coming or going. Why? Because they didn't take the responsibility. They didn't take the responsibility to, 
to do the things that they needed to do in order to further their growth. You cannot rely on your feelings alone. You cannot rely on the feeling of, yes, I feel like I love God. I, 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 I feel. You can't rely on that feeling to carry you. It gets to a point whereby you have to make that due diligence in taking action. You have to take action, brothers and sisters. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's our responsibility. It's our responsibility. Because Satan is lurking. Satan is not playing. He's always at work. He's committed to his mission. We have to also be committed. We need to gird our mind. We have to gird ourselves. Even if I don't, you don't feel like it, you don't feel like it. It's not about what you feel. It's about what you decide to do. Amen. I may be feeling tired, but you know what? I'm going to get up and pray. Amen. I may be feeling tired, but you know what? I'm going to get up and read the word. Amen. I'm going to grow in the knowledge of God. That's the responsibility that we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want us to um, open to Galatians. Chapter 5. Now, of course, you know, um, in, in, in the letter that Paul sends to these Christians that, that are in Galatia, again, these Christians were Christians that were sold out for God, right? They made that decision to follow Christ Jesus. But then what was happening is that you had a group, a sect. They were telling these Christians that you have to follow the Jewish regulations. You need to follow the laws. I mean, I can't go through all of it. And so I'm just, just giving a quick summary of the background because I believe that there's something in here that we can learn from in terms of responsibility. And so these, these Christians, were, um, these, these, these people was, were, were, were basically sharing a false gospel saying that, well, you believe in Jesus Christ, that's fine, but you need to abide in the Jewish regulations. You need to follow the, the, the book of the law, the, the law of the book, the book of Moses. You need, to, you need to follow the customs of these things in order to be saved. And so Paul is addressing these people, telling them, you know, chastising them, saying, how can you be foolish? Why are you following a different gospel than one that I preached to you? So basically, he then goes on to explain what it means to follow the law of the book and the liberty that you have in Christ that is righteousness through faith from the hearing of the faith and he basically makes a contrast of these and he explains that if you're going to even follow if you're saying that you're going to follow the laws of the book right if you're going to follow the laws that is of Moses then you have to follow all of them you have to follow all of them and then he goes on to say, it's evident that no one is able to keep all of those laws. He goes on to say that it's evident. Because um, in Deuteronomy, and he poor points it out, it says that you must follow all of the commandments. You must follow all of the observance. You must follow all of the, and even if you miss one, you are cursed. So essentially he's saying that you're putting yourself under bondage. When you go on these. Now, he's not saying these laws are bad or anything like that. But then he goes on to tell you the purpose of this law. He said that these laws, that is of the, the, the laws of the book, is to point, it, it shows your sin. It shows you that, wow, I'm actually not as good as I thought I was. I thought I was righteous, but actually when I'm, you know, when I see the commands of God and the things that we have to do, I realize that I fail all the time. Even one. Like, even if I break one, I've broken, I've broken all of them. And so, and, 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 and then he says that the law is like, a, it's like a tutor that is teaching us. It's keeping us, on, keeping us on guard so that we don't go astray. Until the promised time that has come. That is the seed of Abraham that is Jesus Christ. That has come to bless all nations. 
He has come to bless all nations. So that is from basically from um, when you read it from chapter 1 to chapter 4. These are the things and it contrasts the two covenants. And so when it gets to um, chapter 5 now. So now he's telling them now that you're in Christ. So, so, so this is what you must do. And so when we read, so, you know, we're going to read. It says, stand fast. So this is from verse 1. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And when he's talking about the yoke of bondage, he's talking about the laws that these people are now relying in. So basically, essentially, these people are now relying on these laws in order to be to have salvation, rather than on, on Christ, rather than trusting what Christ has done on the cross for them. And so now they believe that, yes, I'm believing in Jesus Christ, but that's not enough. I need to observe this observance of the Jewish customs and the Jewish regulations in order to be saved. This is what these people were preaching, basically. And so these Galatians, Christians, their mind was being turned to that kind of gospel. And so Paul was reminding them that, no, you have liberty in Christ. We have liberty in Christ. And he goes, indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. So that's the point I was making. If you're saying that I need to follow the, 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 the book of the law, and so therefore I need to be circumcised in order to be saved, then it's not just that you have to do. You have to follow all of those laws. Because if you don't, because now you're putting yourself under bondage under that law. You're putting yourself under, now you become a slave to that. So you, you have to abide by that now. And so now you don't, so now the, the, the blood of Jesus profits you nothing no more. What Jesus Christ has done on the cross, it means nothing no more. Because now you're following these laws. And so if you're following these laws, you have to follow it from all of it. And, and he had already stated that no one is able to follow all of it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it says, and then he goes on to say, you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says that, so, so that's what I said. That's what I said before. That when you're, uh, you're saying that you're justified by the law, then you've forsaken the grace of God. You've forsaken it. But most importantly, it says faith. That the spirit that we receive is through the faith in Jesus Christ is what he has done through love. So faith, because we have faith, it causes us to um, an action to walk in love, essentially. And so by you walking in this love, it's by you displaying the faith that you have in Jesus Christ and how you operate in this love, how you operate in this walk is what shows your spiritual growth. Amen. And then just to um, add on to something here. And so when you go to verse 16, or should I read from verse 13? I'm just going to read it through. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. In other words, don't use Christ's liberty as an excuse to live sinfully. Okay, that's what he's saying. But through love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. But if you... Yeah. So then skip into 16. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit. Whose responsibility is it to walk in the spirit? Yourselves. Walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit so that you don't fulfill the lust of your flesh. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? <laughs> As he said it already, he says faith through love. God is spirit. God is love. And so when you're walking in the love, you're walking in the spirit. 
You are abiding in the spirit. That means you're being led. That's, that's how you know you're being led by the Holy Spirit. Anything that's contrary to that, it's not the spirit, it's your flesh. That's what you're operating on. And, 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 and he says it, he goes, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Right? And then he goes on, he breaks it down and tells you what the working of the flesh is. He says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are idolatry, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, self ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. These are the workings of the flesh. And when he's talking about the flesh, he's talking about the sinful nature that is in us. These are the things that goes against the spirit. Spirit of love, essentially. These are the things. Because what do those things, what do they all have in common? What does fornication, um, 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 drunkenness, reveries, you know, reveries, you know, parties and so forth. That is, you know, revel, you know, when you revel in, in, in you know, wild, wild things, wild parties, um, uh, um, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies. What are these things? What, what commonality do they all have? That's right. Self. Hallelujah. It, all the things that is common in them is that it's all about you. They're all selfish ambitions. Selfish things that you want to fulfill within yourself. That is the, 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 the acts of the flesh. That is what they all have in common. It's about you. It's about your fun. It's about your fulfillment. How I'm fulfilled. It's about all of these things. These are the evidence of these. These are the things that go against the Holy Spirit. Or that resists the Holy Spirit. And so whose responsibility is it? Whose responsibility is it to walk in the spirit to be able to resist the flesh? Of course, it's our faith in Jesus Christ. Trusting that the Holy Spirit is working in us and us actually taking actions to be able to cut ourselves off from this flesh. Just like when you get circumcised and the foreskin of the flesh is cut off. What does the foreskin of the flesh resemble? It resembles, you know, because the the foreskin, pardon my language, it traps dirt. It, 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 it traps filth. Right? So it's cut off. So in that same way in our hearts, we have to cut off that flesh. We have to cut off and we have to take steps to doing that. We have to take steps for myself, you know, my friends. You know, I love my friends, you know, from, you know, way back. But it got to a point, as I was growing in knowledge, right? As I was adding to myself knowledge and growing more in the knowledge of God and now taking steps in self-control, then it, it got to the point now that my friends have now become obstacles in my way, in me developing in my spiritual growth. They have become a stumbling block now because the things that they talk about doesn't profit me. It doesn't profit my spirit, but rather it profits my flesh. It feeds into my flesh. And I was having a difficult time. You know, I'm trying to <laughs> live right. I'm trying to live in, you know, walk according to God. By that, here they are talking about fornication, talking about, you know, the things that got, they're going to be doing with, you know, women and all of these debauchery, all of these kind of things. And I had to make a decision and actually take a step, take action. And the action was, you know what? 
let me distance myself. Let me take that action to distance myself. And so I took responsibility into my own hands. I wasn't waiting, Lord, I don't know, come and just, <laughs> I don't know, just do something, right? God has already given me the answer. The Holy Spirit has already given me the answer and what I needed to do. That God will not force you to do something. He will speak to you. Just like the example that I made, that if I come to you and you say you trust me and then I give you an advice to do something and then you say, no, nah, I'm going to do this instead, then that means you didn't trust me. So in the same way the Holy Spirit speaks to us and tells us, hey, you know, cut this and you're like, nah, I'm going to do this instead. That means you're not trusting the Spirit because you're thinking like, if I cut this thing off, <laughs> how would I achieve, how, how would I gain this joy, this thing that brings me so much joy, it brings me so much ah, life. This thing gives me life. How can I let go of that? And that thing that gives you life could be fornication. Some people, they, they, don't, have, they, don't, have, they don't have peace until they do that thing. They don't have joy until they do that thing. Until they're around, either they're, they're fornicating or they uh, uh, have to go to, you know, whatever they're doing, that's in their flesh. If I don't do these things, then I'm not having fun. I'm not enjoying myself. How can I gain these things? But I'm saying, when you put your trust in the Holy Spirit, that thing, that thing that you think that, ah, oh, I, I, I need to have it in order to enjoy life. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will change your mindset so quickly that the thing that you begin to rejoice in, you'll be like, wow. I never knew that I would have so much fun in the Lord. I never knew I would enjoy so much of the Lord. Back in the day, I didn't used to be able to, 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 to even sing to the Lord. It's like I just found it boring. But the more I grew, the more I was taking responsibility in my actions and leading, the more the joy of the Lord was just filling my heart. And now I cannot wait to be in the midst with my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's my time out. Hallelujah. Amen.